one thing I've been getting as far as tweets is people love when they you retweet them or you actually answer people's hair questions all the time on your Facebook page. I'm a huge tweeter, huge Facebook. It's all me. I don't have an assistant. I'm the one that answers them. That's why sometimes... You know, I'm MIA. It's really funny. If I'm MIA on Twitter, people start asking me if I'm okay. Funny. Yeah, people will tweet me and go, are you okay? We haven't heard from you for a while. Funny. What's going on? Funny. I love that. How are the Oscars? You went to the Oscars. The Oscars. Was that the first time you ever went? Yeah, off the hook. It was crazy. Oh, So who had the best hair? Mm. Oh, God. Kate Blanchett, I thought, was just I loved that outfit. I loved it. People, people bagged her, but from head to toe. Gorgeous. Halle Berry, but I mean, please, Duh. it's Halle Berry. Yeah. She could wear a bag on her head and look yeah. good. Um, Helen Mirren, she's just so classy. She, I want to be her when I grow up. You are, like, going to be I her. I do. I want to be her when you I grow be up. Her. She's so classy. There's no doubt about it. Sandra Bullock looked really good as well. So was that like a, what kind of, what did that feel like? And so was that your first time ever going to that? You're like, oh, my God, I really made it. I'm at the Oscars. I'm on the red carpet. You Were, were you actually in the show? No, no, no. I was, I mean, I was one of the hosts mm -hmm. for TV Guide Channel and we had all different stations. So I, I was at one of the stations. Um, it was wild. It was very surreal because I went into it. Look, I talk about this. I know I'm a celebrity, whatever, you know, but I'm a, I'm a regular person. I'm a hairdresser. I work behind the chair. All of a sudden I'm at the Oscars. You have to have a dress. And you okay. look great. Thank you look so good. It was beautiful. It's on your website at tapwithacoffee.com. My my dress was I bow down to Ali Rahimi who made it. He literally did it from one fitting. I had no dress. Well, I had you have no a, shoes. You have a good body. So nothing. it probably wasn't that hard. I mean, look at yeah, you. Yeah, but the man constructed the dress. I mean, it was crazy. And you know if you're going to go and critique people, you, you better make sure you look good. You exactly. got to. And you did. It's a whole thing. Like, if I'm going to stand there and say – what is this about? <laughs> you know you have to look okay. Well, you look fantastic. Now, you're going to be, you're doing so much in Atlanta. So tonight, you're doing an event at Reras, head shaving for St. Baldrick, and I know that, that it, childhood cancers, that's a big thing for you. You talk about that a lot, about how self-esteem mm -hmm. is so important with that. What it, it struck that passion for you? Look, I honestly, I had this email a few years ago from a children's hospital in New Jersey that has a cancer section for children. And one of the nurses took it upon herself and sent me this really touching email and told me about a girl that was going back to school after going through treatment. She'd lost all her hair and her prom was coming up and she just loved me. She watched me all through hospital mm -hmm. and she really wanted a wig styled by me because she wanted to go back to school and just feel normal. She just wanted to be a normal teenager again when she mm -hmm. went back to school. And I said I would absolutely do it. Then I found out that there wasn't a lot of wigs available to kids. The quality was crap. If they didn't have a lot of money, they couldn't afford these great wigs. And they would get them and they literally looked like, I mean, my dog has better hair than these wigs that they gave the kids. And it was so upsetting to me. So I went and got her a wig that was a nice quality wig. And she came in and we cut it and styled it. And it was just so amazing. I mean, kids handle tough things so much differently than we do. And she was so strong and so appreciative. And she went to prom and her parents were crying. And it was just such a great moment that it prompted me to keep doing it and to keep helping Anyone. I mean, cancer is something that affects us all, but especially when you see children. No doubt. It is just something that we really need to find out, you know, how to cure it, how to tackle it, how to take better care of them. We need money for research and we need money for them. Well, I think what you're doing at St. Baldrick tonight with St. Baldrick's at Reros is great. And uh, I think it's a, a wonderful thing. And you're at events all over town. You're at Whiskey Park tonight. You're going to be I'm at everywhere. Outright Bookstore tomorrow. You are selling that I'm book, girl. all over Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> now, today, uh, during our Radio Free Lunch, we do a theme show every day. I'm curious to know what Tab Tabitha's thoughts on rock star iconic hair. So who would have your favorite rock star hottest hairstyles? Wow, rock star. I mean, of course, you know, Flock of Seagulls. I loved be. Flock of Seagulls. Are you kidding? I emulated their hair. That was amazing. I also went to Pat Benatar for some reason. She just like went right into my head. Really weird. 
But that was like one of my first initial reactions. So did you try to cut people's hair to look like Pat Benatar in the beginning? No, but I think, I mean, she had that look. Come yeah, on, it was yeah. that kind of, you know, rocker look. But Flock of Seagulls, are you kidding? Every now and then you'll still see me sport that little front thing going on. That is a really, really good look. Although I don't think he, I think he's lost some of his hair for sure. I'm sure he has, but it was really good at the time. How much do I love this? In your book, you say, bitch is someone who is brave, intelligent, tenacious, creative, and honest. That's because... When I was on Sheer Genius, everyone called me a bitch. Everyone. I and don't think you're a bitch at all. I met you for 10 minutes. You couldn't be it's nicer. It's so weird. Sometimes I would walk through the mall and people would say, oh, you're that bitch. <gasps> so it was, it was such a negative thing and it's such a negative word. And I wasn't. I was just honest. I just said what was on my mind. And I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. So I came up with that acronym for bitch. And in everything that I think that it stands for, which is really just a strong, intelligent, independent woman that is a go-getter. Who doesn't want to be that? Well, you own it. You own it, Tabitha. Of course I do. You and I take want us- everyone else to own it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. So many people are gathering around the studio to wait to meet you, which totally cracks me up. Uh, I'm Because I, I, I feel like I could talk to you all day. Have you ever been to the Bonner Brothers hair show? I haven't. I've always wanted to go. You just missed it. I I know I did. I was actually traveling. Otherwise, I would have come for it. Do you think you could ever make a style like that? Is that something in your wheelhouse? Yes. It is? Yes. Well, I think you ought to enter next year. I don't want to enter. I'm too old. I just want to go and have fun. (laughs) I don't want to do all that work. Those days are over. Love that. Love that. Tabitha, thank you so much for joining our webcast. Are there any questions? Anybody want to ask a question? You know why the show is playing in the Netherlands at the moment? Why? We play in 36 countries. My show plays in 36 countries. No, it's so it's playing in the Netherlands, but I have all these people. And the other day I was in New York doing a photo shoot and all these Dutch people kept coming up going, hi, we watch your show. It was great. I loved it. Meanwhile, you could totally fit in there. Oh, you, I could totally could, fit in. Yeah, you, right? Yeah, I could totally fit in. You totally could. But what's it like watching yourself when they're translating it? And I you're haven't. Su- I Actually, no, I, I'm lying. I have. I have a really good friend in Los Angeles and he's Italian, his family's in Italy and they taped the show and sent it to me and we watched it online and it was me speaking Italian and I was fabulous. (laughs) (laughs) My Italian was perfect. (laughs) That's so funny. That's so funny. I mean, that must be really weird watching yourself like, wow, look at me. Well, I want to see myself because we play in Asia, so I want to see myself speaking Chinese or, you know, speaking some really hard, like, Russian or some really hard accent. Although my Italian was very good, I have to say. That's great. I'm sure they would go nuts over for you in those Asian countries because, we you do know, really well in they Asia. love blondes. That's a very big and thing I work, there. And I work a lot in Asia. I used to work for a major manufacturer, so my territory was actually the Pacific Rim. So I spent a lot of time in Asia doing hair shows, so I already have you know, a base of hairdressers that know who I am from all the hair shows I've done there. What's up with Asian girls who have the best hair ever, but they always want to dye their hair different colors to me? Is that, you know what I mean? Why is it that in hair, people want what they can't have? People have life. Yeah, people who have great curly hair. Yeah, but that's life. The grass is always greener. Everyone thinks the grass is always greener. Totally. What's the best, what's the next new big hair trend? Well, you know, if you look at what a lot of celebrities are doing, the bob is back. In, in different forms, so a lot more textured. We saw a lot of bobs on the red carpet at the Oscars, which was really interesting in different, in different forms, whether they be smooth, a little graduated, a little textured. So that is kind of interesting. Shorter hair as well. A lot of celebrities have kind of cut their hair and gone shorter. And the whole wave long thing, I mean, let's face it, that's never going anywhere. Is it appropriate to have dreadlocks if you're not a Rastafarian? it depends on the person on some people it can look pretty fabulous but it depends on the person is it appropriate to have a mohawk if you're four years old no sorry (laughs) no unless it's just for fun no 